Hello everyone and welcome to this month's episode of Jig Retro. This episode is a follow-up to a previous episode that I did relating to modern indie games that have piqued my interest due to their obvious retro inspiration. If you enjoy the content, please like, share among like-minded gaming enthusiasts and subscribe to get the latest episodes as soon as they're released. I release episodes on the last Friday of every month. Anyway, that's enough publicity. Let's look at these fantastic games. You don't have to be a gaming and collecting uber geek like myself to enjoy retro video games nowadays. The PS4, Xbox One and Switch's online stores are littered with retro inspired games. In fact, some may well say that it's oversaturated with the genre. But that's where I come in to highlight the absolute cream of the crop the games that any video game enthusiast can enjoy. The modern, retro-inspired indie game scene has never been so fruitful. So let's get right to it. Hunt down. Hunt Down, released in May 2020, was developed by Easy Trigger Games, which was founded by newcomers raised on Commodore computers. Tommy Gustafsson and Andreas Reinberg, based in Sweden. Set in a neon dystopian future, street gangs have taken over the city, leaving the police completely powerless. Enter the bounty hunters, who for the right price will clear these streets of gangs one by one. All the 80s culture and retro gaming cliches right there. And frankly, at this point, this kind of description in a video game generally turns me right off with its oversaturation but this game is just so damn endearing and beautiful with its hand-drawn pixel art tight and simple gameplay and pop culture references from the time hunt down is a side-scrolling action run and gun game with a slight nod to classic run and gun games such as contra metal slug and robocop vs terminator my first impression of the game really reminded me of the very flawed but frankly one of my favourite video games growing up, The Terminator on the Sega Mega Drive. Audio wise the soundtrack fits perfectly and there is seemingly endless voice dialogue coming out of these characters and enemies, especially with the bosses. There is plenty of destruction, beefy sound effects coming from the weapons and plenty of gore for all of your bloodlust needs. There is a choice of three bounty hunters to choose from, Mo Man, a droid, John Sawyer, a cyborg, and the female badass Anaconda, who all start out with different weapons and sub-weapons, so I guess just choose your preferences from there. I personally play mostly as Anaconda as I prefer her primary weapon, but there are plenty of weapons constantly littering the screen beside the dead bodies that you've slain. Anything from a katana to a grenade launcher and everything in between. Another mechanic is a simple press of the up button in order to back up into dark alleyways and doorways, in order to take shelter from the barrage of bullets and attacks heading your way. Although on the whole each stage is short and sweet, the challenge in this game can be quite significant, especially when it comes to the epic boss battles. I look forward to being able to play this game some more, especially in local co-op. Unfortunately, something I haven't been able to do since its release. Make a healthy living by making living unhealthy in Hunt Down. The next game I'd like to mention is Fire Pro Wrestling World. This is the latest release from the huge Japanese wrestling game series, which is represented as far back as the SNES and also saw releases on the PS2 and the Game Boy Advance. What I like about this game in particular is that it doesn't deviate too far from its roots and what made it popular to begin with. For any fan of wrestling, this game is a must. And frankly, this is the best wrestling video game to be released in years. Released in 2017 on the PS4 and the PC only, I'm afraid, and developed by Spike Chunsoft. The visual presentation is wonderfully simple and retro in feel, and the display is completely stripped back. No health or spirit meters in this game. You must observe how damaged you or your opponents are through subtle movements and animations within the game. You have to catch your breath with the hold of a button, which obviously leaves you open to much punishment. 
This is where strategy comes into play. You must slowly build through your move set, starting with kicks, punches and lighter moves and working your way towards more devastated moves towards the end of the match. Heading for your bigger moves too early will leave you wide open for counter attacks. Gameplay can definitely be frustrating and difficult to get used to at first, but soon you'll be using an amazingly huge variety of moves against your opponent effortlessly. It's all down to timing. As soon as your players touch during the grapple, you need to initiate your attack combo straight away. As said, this is all about timing. Due to being developed in Japan, a lot of the American style gimmick matches are not to be seen here, such as ladder matches. Instead, we have octagon style MMA bouts, barbed wire matches, and matches involving explosives. The creator wrestler is lots of fun to tinker around with, and creations can be uploaded and downloaded via a web link and your PlayStation ID. Believe me when I say that all the 80s, Attitude Era, WCW, NWO, ECW and modern wrestlers are all available via this method. To download and recreate some classic matches of the past or some fancy matches such as Stone Cold Steve Austin vs CM Punk. The Mummy Demastered is the next title, and in the oversaturated world of Metroidvania games, this game is standout, and a very rare case of a movie tie-in game being fantastic. Much better than the crappy movie, in fact. Released in October 2017 and developed by WayForward Technologies, who brought us the Shantae series, originally for the Game Boy Color and Aliens Infestation on the Nintendo DS, which on the whole is similar to this game. The fantastic pixel art and atmosphere brought about by the music and sound effects reminds me a lot of Super Metroid, but this is far from a clear-cut rip-off. This game has some serious challenge at times, especially with the boss battles. The main gimmick in this game is that if you die, then you need to find your way back and kill your now zombified version of yourself in order to retrieve all of your items that you had up until you died. The action is run and gun based and holding the shoulder button will allow you to stand still and shoot in different directions. A playthrough will take you around the six hour mark, which I think is pitched perfectly. It certainly doesn't outstay its welcome. This series of videos will hopefully continue as I'm constantly discovering new games, being recommended games, or frankly, these retro style video games just keep on getting released. These are just some absolutely stunning examples of retro video gaming being alive and well. I'm all ears down in the comment section below for your recommendations of video games that I can try because this is absolutely the kind of video games that I spend my time with nowadays. Your recommendations will possibly make it into a future video. I hope you enjoy my content. Many thanks for watching and until next month, much love. Please look after yourselves and each other and get your geek on with Jig Retro.